Selecting which budget graphics card to go with is a really tough task, but the reason why it's a good problem is because there's just so many great options available right now. The GTX 10 series launched all the way back in 2016, but somehow it's definitely still filled with GPUs that you should consider if you're rocking that budget baller mindset. There's actually a clear winner between these three GPUs, and I'm gonna be recommending one of these cards way more often after making this video. We'll also be using this beautiful new build as our testing rig, which we're gonna sell with a 7700 XT for super cheap on our website here very soon, but we'll talk about that a bit later. I'm gonna break down the entire GTX 10 series for you in this video, and we're not gonna go super in depth. I'm just gonna give you the actual important information you need as a gamer. And here's a list of how we'll break down the video all after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now, which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18, and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office, and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too, like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple, and only takes like 3 minutes total, so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark, and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. We're gonna do things a bit differently here, and I'm actually not gonna mention any sort of CUDA core amount, clock speed, megahertz, or anything that doesn't actually matter to an average gamer. If you want the super in-depth and nerdy kind of information, that's completely fine, and it may bring you some value, but I'm gonna just tell you what you actually need to know. VRAM is a very hot topic right now, because even in 1080p, games have been utilizing more than four gigabytes lately, but thankfully, all of the cards that we're testing today have at least more than that. Our GTX 1060 is a six gigabyte model, and that's rocking GDDR5, and at this point, 2023, I really don't recommend the three gigabyte version anymore because of what I just said. Even six gigabytes is kind of pushing it. Now, the GTX 1070 has eight gigabytes of GDDR5, which I would consider perfectly fine for these budget cards. And the GTX 1080 also has eight gigabytes, but this one has GDDR5X, which is a bit faster. Six gigabyte, eight gigabyte, eight gigabyte, that's all you really need to know. In terms of power draw, here we will have to get into some real spec numbers, but it's important because you need to make sure you're properly powering your budget builds. On paper, Nvidia says that the GTX 1060 has a TDP of 120 watts, and they recommend at least a 400 watt power supply. For the GTX 1070, that has a 155 watt TDP, and they recommend 500 watts. And the GTX 1080 has a 180 watt TDP, and they also recommend 500 watts. For all three of these cards, I think it would be perfectly fine to pair them with the tier C power supply, just type in Google PSU tier list and you'll find this. Aside from power, the only other numbers I think you should know of are the average eBay price. And whenever we talk about pricing, I'm pulling data from averagefinder.com because that scrubs all the recent eBay data and that gives us some nice easy prices to read. The average eBay price right now for a GTX 1060 six gigabyte is $67. For the GTX 1070, it's $89. And the GTX 1080, it's $142. Those prices are extremely important, not only just for your budget, but also when we talk about value after we see the benchmarking numbers. And speaking of which, All right, so we're gonna test all three of these cards with some of the more modern AAA titles because honestly, the entire internet already knows that you can play games like Fortnite, Minecraft, and Valorant with these cards without a problem. That data isn't interesting. In fact, here's the chart with all of those older and easier to run games. And other than Ark Survival Evolved, we got playable results with every single card and these settings are mostly around high, which you love to see. You can play Ark at 60 FPS with lower settings with the GTX 1060, so don't worry about that. But in terms of the newer games, I haven't seen much data on the internet recently with the GTX 1060. 10 series, which is basically the main purpose of me making this video today. How do these GTX 10 series cards run in games like Starfield, Hogwarts Legacy, and the new Cyberpunk 2.0? To find that out, we're still going to be using the exact same settings across all three of these GPUs, but we are using settings that we recommend you play with if you had a GTX 1070, which is our middle performing card. If you see some slightly lower FPS numbers with the 1060, just remember that you can tweak the settings a bit lower and get a higher FPS. We're just using settings based on the 1070 for now. And before showing you this data, I want to make sure that you don't get too hung up on the specific models, brands, and manufacturers of the cards that we're using. Although for today's video, we are using all EVGA graphics cards. It works out because it keeps things a bit more tidy, but honestly, the main reason I got these is because I love how you can remove these corner pieces on the 1070 and 1080, so you can paint them like I did in this video here. We got some upcoming builds plans where I'll be taking full advantage of this. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And for our benchmarking rig, we'll dive into this in just a bit, and you're not going to want to miss this because we'll be selling it with a 70 
7700 XT installed, like I said earlier, for super cheap, but for now, it's rocking a Ryzen 5 7600X and 64 gigabytes of DDR5. Basically, we don't have to worry about a bottleneck here at all. Because of a setup like this, we'll be getting pretty much the max performance capable out of these cards. But yeah, let's jump into 3D Mark Time Spy first, and here's the results that we got. The GTX 1060 scored 4,277. The GTX 1070 got a 52% boost on top of that, and then the 1080 did 20% more than the 1070. Keep those percentages in the back of your head. Next up, we tested Cyberpunk 2077, and we are indeed testing with the new 2.0 update. Honestly, we tested on the same day that 2.0 launched, so the numbers could be a little different in a week or two from now, but here we got a very similar 56% increase from the 1060 to the 1070, and then a 23% increase from the 1070 to the 1080. Now we have Starfield, and this game is really punishing older hardware, as we can see here. With using, honestly, not great settings of 1080p low with an 80% resolution scale and FSR turned on, we didn't get great results on any of these cards. Starfield has indeed become the new crisis, and if you want to have a good experience playing this game, you're going to need some newer hardware. Hogwarts Legacy, however, is a slightly different story. The GTX 1060 didn't handle 1080p high too well, but you can obviously tweak that down to low. But after that, the GTX 1070 got a nice 65% boost in FPS, and the GTX 1080 did slightly better than that. After that, we tested Resident Evil 4 Remastered, and we're actually just running the demo here, so I don't have to pay for yet another 2023 title. And using 1080p with medium settings, we got 35 FPS, 71, and 86. That's a 103% boost from the 1060 to the 1070, which is wild. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is up after that, and here with 1080p basic settings, we got again our very standard 52% increase from the 1060 to the 1070, and then the 1080 got another 20% boost over that. Next up, we added Diablo 4 to the mix, which obviously isn't a heavily GPU demanding game, but since it launched this year, I still wanted to give you the data for these seven year old graphics cards. Again, 48% boost on the 1070 and 19% boost going up to the 1080. I promise all of these boosting percentage numbers are going to be important once we get to the price to performance value section. We're almost there. And finally, the last game we tested was God of War, launched last year on PC, so it's still relatively new. And with using 1080p original settings, we got 73 FPS with the 1070, which is a 43% increase over the 1060, and the 1080 got 90 FPS, which is another 23% boost. All right, so when we add up and average out those last eight newer games, including 3D Mark's Time Spy, we saw an average increase in performance from the 1060 to the 1070 by 56%. Some games like the Resident Evil 4 Remake were over 100% increase, but then Starfield was only 29%. 56% though is the average. For the GTX 1080, that card only saw an average boost from the 1070 by 19%, and that was pretty consistent across all of our tests. Now, if we look back at the average pricing, which we talked about earlier, here's where things get really interesting. The $89 average price of the 1070 is only 32% more expensive than the 1060, but the GTX 1080 average is 60% more than the 1070. So for a total recap on value, the GTX 1070 is 32% more expensive, but you get a 56% increase in performance over the 1060. And the GTX 1080 is 60% more expensive with only a 19% performance boost compared to the 1070. Rewind that part if you have to, it's literally the most important clip of the entire video. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with all of this though. The GTX 1070 on paper is easily packing the best bang for your buck value across these three graphics cards. However, there is one more thing to consider here when we're talking about value, and that's the other few dozen graphics cards that aren't on this table right now. The biggest one that comes to mind is the GTX 1660 Super, and that's because it performs roughly the same as the GTX 1070, and it's newer. I ran Average Finder again, and I was honestly shocked at the pricing of this one. The GTX 1660 Super is averaging just $92, which is only $3 more than our 1070, and again, it's about the same performance. One important factor though is that the 1660 Super only comes with 6 gigabytes of VRAM, albeit the faster GDDR6 compared to 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 on the 1070. It's definitely a tough call, but if it were up to me, I'd probably recommend going with the 1660 Super over the 1070 because it's newer, the resale value will be higher, and it'll probably just last longer in general. If you snipe either of these cards though for around 80 to 90 bucks, you just can't go wrong, don't overthink it. But real quickly, we do have a few more other comparisons to make here. The GTX 1060 6 gigabyte that we tested is roughly the same performance as an RX 580, and you can find that car brand new on Amazon, at least the 2048 SP models for around $90. And for the GTX 1080, that tests slightly worse than an RX 6600, and that card's about $200 on the new market. 
And finally, let's quickly talk about how we got all of this testing done in the first place, because this is a beast of a new testing rig featuring some parts that you probably haven't seen before. Starting with performance, we have the Ryzen 5 7600X, and Corsair sent us the 64 gigabyte Dominator Platinum RGB kit clocked at 6400 megahertz. Corsair actually hooked us up with pretty much everything else as well. Powering all of it is a 1000 watt RMX shift power supply. We got a two terabyte blazing fast MP600 Pro LPX, and all of these beautiful RGB components are part of Corsair's new IQ Link software. I became absolutely in love with this entire ecosystem. I love how you can use one single connector on everything and even just stack the fans on top of each other. And this is as high of quality as it gets for customization in a gaming PC. The IQ Link H100i RGB AIO kept our 7600X perfectly in check. And honestly, I can't wait until I build with IQ Link again. It was that good. I am in love with this. Oh, I want to do another one already. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. That's crazy. And finally, everything that I'm talking about is inside Corsair's new 3000D case. And if you haven't seen this, already, it's basically just a budget version of the 4000D. Now I'll admit, I was definitely hoping that the 3000D would be the micro ATX version in between the ITX 2000D and the ATX 4000D, but I guess I'm going to have to wait for a 2500D now. Huge shout out either way to Corsair for making this testing rate possible. And like I hinted at in the intro, we will be selling this on our upcoming October 1st restock, and we're going to sell this build for $1,250, which is a steal and a half. With all of the Corsair RGB products in here and the 7600X, 64 gigabytes, and RX 7700, XT, this is about a $2,000 build. If you've been hunting for a high-end gaming PC at a steal, it will not get any better than this, but be quick because it'll sell out super fast per usual. And if you can't afford a high-end gaming PC, but you still want one, we are still running an RTX 3070 build giveaway, and all you need to do is tune into my live streams. All throughout the month, you simply acquire points by watching my live streams, whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, so make sure you turn on notifications so you get a chance at winning this beautiful PC on October 5th. And if you'd rather just build a PC yourself, but you think you may need some extra help, head on over to zaxtechturf.com consulting, where I can help you pick the parts for your build one-on-one. -on -one. I've been having a ton of fun helping you guys out over there. Check out all of these reviews, by the way. You all seem to be really enjoying the service too, which I love to see. But yeah, that's all of the information that I think you need for the GTX 10 series graphics cards. Make sure you let me know down in the comment section which GPUs you want to see me review next.